For today's In Focus, we hop across the Irish Sea to take a look at the monument of Newgrange in the Republic of Ireland. Located in County Meath, only 25 miles from Dublin, this monument, along with two others, form part of a Neolithic and Bronze Age complex in the Boyne Valley. The mound at Newgrange has long been a focus of fascination. It was mentioned in the 12th century Book of Leinster, where Oengus tricked his father into giving him it for all eternity. And in centuries subsequent, this monument has been interpreted as a pyramid and also served as a focus of tourism, right up into the 19th century. Throughout this time, and most certainly by the time of the 20th century, Newgrange had been in a sorry state. Partially collapsed around its edges, the mound was a shadow of its former self. However, despite the dilapidation, stories of powerful magic and connections with the heavens abounded, and one can hardly blame landowners for using some of its stones to build a folly in the beautiful landscape. Was this to be Newgrange's story? A curio? Enter Professor Michael J. O'Kelly, who in 1962 was determined that this monument should be studied properly. Over several seasons, he carefully mapped and excavated the monument, revealing more about its innards, specifically revealing a 60-foot stone-lined passage which made its way into the heart of the mound. This work allowed him, on the 21st of December 1967, to observe winter solstice in the monument. Every year, for a little over 15 minutes, sunlight passes straight through a window above the door to the monument. From here, it is afforded a straight line of sight, the very heart of New Grange, bringing light to the dark, life to that which is dead. The significance of this alignment is still hotly debated, and to a certain extent we can only make educated guesses as to the ceremonies and associations people had with New Grange. However, what can be said is that this alignment is not accidental, and indeed today you can even buy a lottery ticket to be one of the privileged few to see the sun enter the inner sanctum. New Grange is also famous for its swirling, spiralling artwork. For some, this artwork has its roots in entoptics, hallucinogenic, psychedelic artwork. Whatever the case may be, it cannot be denied that this beautiful artwork is iconic in the truest sense, simple, hypnotic and attractive. These motifs have come to represent New Grange to many, and indeed the modern visitor to the site can barely escape them. If you want, you can even buy them in the form of jewellery. But for some archaeologists, the most important talking point of New Grange is not the carved curbstones, but rather what has been placed above them. Following excavations, there was an attempt to conserve New Grange by placing a revetment or retaining wall around part of the mound. For some, this was seen as a restoration. For others, this was a travesty. They pointed to the fact that the revetment had largely been constructed from concrete and steel rebar, hardly a Bronze Age building material. And who was to say that the stones found around the monument were not there to pave the way to the monument, rather than serving as a revetment? This feature now defines New Grange and remains controversial to this day. However, for the many thousands of people who visit New Grange every year, this debate is largely obscured and New Grange is a monument with a very attractive and neat exterior and an incredibly ancient and remarkable interior. It has been argued by some that this controversial, tidy approachability has given New Grange an almost unique new lease of life. Almost a modern Irish monument with a bit of a sense of humour, a monument which can edify and inspire the artist, and a monument which can live, if whimsically, in the imaginations of many. Now, of course, this can be taken too far, and often New Grange is overly romanticised or misinterpreted, and it has most certainly been abused by some with relatively modern nationalistic agendas. As for the exact nature of New Grange's original form and function, debate will undoubtedly continue. But perhaps the greatest legacy of New Grange is its reappropriation. It is a living example of why these great monuments survive. Essentially, it has been adopted by the modern age.